Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. Are you a black woman seeking to have a medical procedure or treatment abroad? This channel focuses on medical tourism for black women. So if you're interested in learning more about cost, pre and post surgical care and treatments, medications, therapy, follow up and so much more, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I post a new video. So my name is Dr. Natasha Ramenthal, also known as the Medical Tourism RN. I'm not a physician. I am a doctoral trained nurse who's worked in the emergency department and post anesthesia care unit for a number of years. Um, everything on my channel covers all aspects of medical tourism for black women if they decide to seek health care or treatment abroad for things from anything from cosmetic surgery to cancer or fertility treatment in order for black women to make the most informed decisions about their health care to have the best outcomes and experience. But today I wanted to briefly touch on medical tourism safety. So in light of the recent events where four Americans were shot at and abducted in Matamoros, uh, Mexico, who were reportedly visiting for medical tourism, um, I unfortunately two of those individuals died, um, Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown, uh, and also an unidentified Mexican woman who was caught in the crossfire um, and also died in that incident. So my condolences to the families of these individuals. And I also wanna uh, send my well wishes um, for a speedy recovery to the surviving companions, uh, Latavia Washington McGee and Eric Williams who are recovering in the US. So I'm sure if you watch American media, you've seen an influx of press coverage about medical tourism not being safe. Um, as with everything, medical tourism has pros and cons, right? I want to encourage all of you to understand how best to prepare yourselves with information that will help you remain safe before you even travel to any location. So when you decide you are going to participate in medical tourism, you should, you should be researching everything. I'm going to give you the top five things to research, okay? Number one, the procedure. So when you decide to have a procedure abroad, you should research as much as you can about the actual procedure. You should learn about various techniques, tools that are used, risks, um, and you can take notes with questions so that you can ask your surgeon, but you, should, you need to be engaged in all aspects of what will take place with the procedure. If it involves surgery, what type of incision, how big, where do they plan to do the incision? There may, there may be a standard, but depending on your unique situation and the history, um, your medical history, the surgeon may have to use a different method, maybe vertical incision versus horizontal incision, things like that. But you wanna also ask about risks, including infection, expected downtime, complications, um, exp you know, things to kind of consider. Um, and I also want you to ask about what to expect with recovery, including follow-up visits, um, so you know how much time you need to rest before you decide to travel back to your country of origin. So what does recovery involve? So th that's the first thing I want you to ask about. Number two, the facility. So I want you to research the facility you plan on having your procedure or treatment at. You can actually Google the facility to find out basics, and I suggest that you look into whether the facility is accredited by the Joint Commission International, JCI. I'll leave their information in the description. But the Joint Commission is a United States-based um, nonprofit organization that actually accredits more than 22,000 U.S. healthcare organizations and programs. But the international branch, the Joint Commission International, they accredit and certify healthcare organizations, programs, and medical services from around the world for healthcare quality and of care and also for patient safety. So the JCI is the industry leading international accreditation body with over a thousand accredited and certified organizations. Um, they're trusted globally across diverse care settings, ranging from large academic health care centers hospitals, um, enterprise systems, to ambulatory surgery clinics, laboratories, um, and also home care. Essentially everywhere a patient is, um, patient care is delivered. So if your facility is not accredited by the JCI, I would check whether they have any um, partnerships or affiliations with reputable universities or facilities. If they do, great. If they do not, I would reconsider and search for a facility that is JCI accredited, 
Okay, this way you can rest assured that you have the gold standard of approval for patient care, quality, and safety. Number three, physicians. So you're going to research the physician. I want you to find out where they were educated for medical school, how long they've been practicing, where they've practiced. Um, I also want you to look into their credentials. If you can find any information on that, um, that's what you need. You are also going to interview them, right? Okay, when you interview them, it is um, to learn about the procedure and how they will conduct the surgery or the treatment. But you'll also need to determine if you like their disposition or their bedside manner, right? They may do these surgeries on different patients all day long, but there's only one you. Okay, so you want to be sure you feel comfortable that that physician is knowledgeable. And when you ask your questions that they are um, patient with you and can fully explain the answers. Also ask to see pictures of black patients. Don't be afraid to ask if they don't. That is fine. But I think it's important that you ask. Okay, this is not the time to be shy. You know, this is your health. Number four, the location where you are planning to have the procedure done and also the surrounding areas. I want you to research that. So research the exact location of where the surgery will be performed, like the facility address, um, and also research the surrounding areas to make sure that you are in a place that is safe. Um, with recent incident with the four Black U.S. individuals who traveled from South Carolina in the U.S. to Matamoros, Mexico, I don't know how much research was done about Matamoros, but I will say this, although Matamoros is known as a small area for medical tourism, not very popular at all. Um, I Googled it and found some basic information, but I always encourage people to go on travel web websites like TripAdvisor and things like that, um, and also expat and repat sites, and also join groups to ask um, questions, you know, Facebook or some type of social media where, that has expat and repat groups, uh, ask questions, learn about others' experiences, because people are always willing to share. When I went on TripAdvisor and looked up Matamoros, it actually had information from 13 years ago, where a female traveled there um, thinking it was a tourist dream and explained how much of a nightmare it actually was being a border town. Border towns are notorious for being unsafe. I also found information on a U.S. tourist being murdered in Matamoros um, by a cult 34 years ago. Now, that was a long time ago, but still, it existed. The information was out there. Um, so, yes, use Google, but I also implore you to look at travel websites and look at the expat and repat groups. Number five. Determine if you will work through the facility to coordinate your procedure or your treatment or work with a medical tourism facilitator, um, whether that facilitator's uh, agency or an independent. So I want you to determine if you'll coordinate your tourism, um, medical tourism procedure yourself, working with the facility directly um, or with that agency or independent uh, medical tourism facilitator. If you decide to coordinate on your own, I suggest that you go to um, Patients Beyond Borders website, and I'll leave the information in the description. But um, what they do is international hospitals and clinics are recommended by Patients Beyond Borders, and they must meet some stringent criteria in order to be listed by patient, um, Patients Beyond Borders. They look at things like whether they are accredited um, by a reliable, globally recognized um, accreditation organization, they make sure that they're in good standing by that. They um, look at whether or not there are legal claims against them, things like that. Um, they also check to see if the facility has uh, websites that are in English. They must be in English for them to be on the Patient Without Borders sites and um, or Patient Beyond Borders site. And then identifiable international services that are offered to patients. They have to list that. And then key physicians and specialists must be listed on their site. Um, typically, that gives them accountability by having their names listed on the actual site. And then their full contact information must also be listed. So if you decide to use a medical um, tourism facilitator, um, whether that's an agency or independent, it's going to be a little different. You may be asking what exactly is a medical tourism facilitator. So they help patients essentially navigate healthcare in a foreign country. 
So the best medical tourism facilitators are trained professionals with a deep understanding of medical treatments and procedures, as well as the medical providers and health systems in their home country or in a region. They could be responsible for a region as well. So they help foreign and sometimes domestic patients select healthcare providers and a system in every step of medical travel planning from booking appointments to post-procedure care. The benefit of having um, a medical uh, tourism facilitator is that you'll find affordable, high quality care is possible and can be arranged with minimal headache, right, or hassle. So the medical tourism facilitator is like an intermediary between the patient, yourself, and the provider. And they can typically assist with provider selection, um, things like travel and planning, uh, healthcare system navigation. And by that, I mean, you know, healthcare systems differ across the world. So um, things like negotiating price, uh, drafting agreements. And in a lot of cases, they can also help translate appointments or documentation um, documents. So they are um, the communication bridge between you, uh, the medical providers, and also the hospital facilities. Um, some benefits of working with a facilitator are risk prevention. So a facilitator will ensure that all your travel, medical, and legal requirements are completed and organized prior to your travel. They also vet facilities and doctors in advance. Um, so their experience, their familiarity, and also their relationship with trusted providers not only improves the likelihood that they'll recommend the best fit, but they can also, um, oftentimes they secure spots on otherwise booked schedules and they can help negotiate um, the best prices. So this coupled with improved communication and emergency support are added benefits of having a medical tourism facilitator. So a couple of questions that you may want to ask yourself um, if you even need a medical tourism facilitator are things like, are you traveling to a destination that you're unfamiliar with? Uh, will you need any special travel documents such as visas? Uh, do you speak the language at your destination? Do you need assistance choosing a facility or a doctor? Do you understand how to guarantee the cost of your procedure or how to negotiate the price? Do you expect to pay using insurance or do you um, know how to even arrange that? Will you need um, assistance with meals, transportation, lodging before, during, or after your treatment or procedure? And then also, will you need um, personal assistance while you recover from your treatment or procedure? Who will, um, who will you turn to for help if something unexpected occurs regarding your travel, your medical care, or your personal health and well-being? So if you answered yes to any of the questions that I just uh, mentioned, you may not need a medical facilitator, but if you are unsure about any of those questions, a medical facilitator can help calm your fears and minimize any stress by giving you someone to lean on in case of um, the unexpected, right? Um, so those are my top five tips for medical tourism safety. And as always, I encourage you guys to do your own research, you know, check the accreditations of hospitals that you're considering, as well as the credentials of any of the physicians. Many sites post reviews from patients. Make sure you read them. Um, and then again, look at the expat and repat sites and travel sites. Usually they have a Q&A page. Make sure you post your questions and people will share their experiences. Um, and, and that way you can gain a better understanding of exactly what you're going in for and what you're going to experience. But until next time, be well and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when I post the next video. Okay, take care everyone.